Uh, in the next section of the debate, we're going to take out points from your manifesto and question you on them. We're going to start with Caitlin. Caitlin, you ran last year and successfully got elected. How do your current policies differ from last year, and what do you want to achieve that you haven't achieved this term? Um, I think the main thing I want to achieve is course rep visibility. We've done a lot of work this year to make the course reps work, and they are very, very good this year. We've got a 90% training rate, and we've got about a 5% dropout, so we're really getting there. Personal year tutors, there's a lot to be done. The university's realised this. It's in the corporate retention plan. We can do it. It just needs more work. And we need our timetables earlier. Students cannot plan their time effectively if they don't know what they're doing. We've got freshers who want to keep their part-time jobs and transfer their hours. We've got parents. We've got student carers. We've got all sorts of students who need that extra support. Time. Uh, and Mahad, in your manifesto, you make a lot of points that highlight many problems. But at no point do you say how you're going to tackle them. For example, how will you campaign for more assistance from the university to provide more skills, preparation, and opportunities? Oh, that, I've, I've talked about this in my debate. Uh, currently, l last year in uh, engineering, we got untimetabled study hours where lectures study and help you outside their work hours. And the, exec uh, and the faculty team is already considering bringing back graduated students to come back and teach these final year students, not only tackling two birds with one stone, employment and study support for a better degree. Okay, uh, and then over to Thomas. In your manifesto, you talk a lot about fighting back. However, you don't mention how you engage the students who are currently going through what you see as a particularly difficult time for higher education. Yeah, um, at the moment we do, as part of social students, we do stalls on campus whenever we can. But I'd like to make uh, a university effort, not just our society effort, to engage students on the ground level. It's all very well being in your office and reading emails, but you need to get out there and talk to students themselves. And this is what we do every day in social students whenever we can. We do it on, on campaigns on a national level, we do it in town, we do it on campus. I'd like to extend that and make that university policy. Okay, uh, and finally, Alison, you said in your manifesto that it will improve the peer mentoring system. A good peer mentoring system is a valuable resource for learning. Students are the embodiment of education. This is an incredible opportunity to students to share their own knowledge with their peers. How are you going to ensure that 23,000 DMU students receive this service? Well, it has been attempted on, on my own particular course and has failed miserably because the tutors got in the way. So it would be quite interesting to see how I could overcome this problem and I would be very interested myself in working on that one through the year. Okay, thank you. Uh, do get your questions tweeted in at Demon FM, or you can text into the studio 60300, starting with the word Demon. Uh, does any of the candidates want to debate a point from one of their fellow candidates' manifestos? We're feeling very shy. Okay, uh, anyone in the audience want to ask a question, do raise your hand, and we will try and get your question to the candidate. Anyone out there got a question for the candidates? Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you one myself. Uh, it's a similar one to the one I asked for student activities. As a DSU executive officer, you're expected, uh, and it's, it's your position, uh, to look after education needs of the students. However, you are a team. How do you plan on making sure that you have access to the other executive officer portfolios, and how do you ensure that you're going to work together as a cohesive team? Over to Caitlin first. It's amazing what happens on Friday night on the front. Um, it's the social elements that you can interact with the other people. Um, obviously, we all talk to each other a lot over our computer screens as well, but I think the the social element of actually being a friendship team as well as a working team is imperative. Okay, and the same question to you, Thomas. How are you going to ensure that you work together as a cohesive working unit for the best and the benefit of the students? Well, um, like I've said a couple of times, I talk to a lot of people um, and a lot of the events I go to, and I'm used to talking to people brand new. So if, I manage, if we can maintain a relationship, then that's fantastic. But I actually think it's bigger than that, and it's not just the executive at DMU. I think it's bigger than that. We need to engage and connect with executives from student unions across the region otherwise I don't think anything can actually be changed Okay, and Alison the same question to you, do you want to repeat it? Uh, no, it's fine, I really truly believe that you have to have a good working relationship and that's a very important thing to, to facilitate either through um, social settings or and obviously within the work environment too Okay, thank you, uh, and finally Mahad same question to you uh, A team that prays together stays together now I'm just going <laughs> Well, I'm talking about um, a good socialization organization where we talk every time. We always have communication together. Therefore, there won't be any mistakes, and we have a strong team. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can anyone get their questions tweeted in at Demon FM? We have about five minutes left with the Deputy President Education candidates. Make sure you are going to be represented by the right person next year who's going to lead your students' union as a team of five people who's going to represent your educational needs to the highest possible level. Um, you can also text in on 60300, starting with the word demon. 
any candidates want to ask any of the other candidates any questions? This is your opportunity to be mean in a public environment. Sorry, Tom. Um, you've said a lot in your manifesto about fighting back to the cuts that are going on sort of nationally, and you've said a lot about talking to other unions, but you haven't ever mentioned what you're going to do for our students here and within our union. So I just wondered how you're going to help the students who are currently here rather than sort of worrying about everybody else. Yeah, um, well, I'm part of the Youth Fight for Jobs campaign, which means getting jobs for students. And I think rather than just concentrating on students' experience here, which is deteriorating because we've had 150 staff cuts since 2011, we need to focus on not just careers, but we need to focus on actual jobs for students, not just after university, but while they're at university, because a lot of students can't maintain um, their position in university without that level of um, financial support that a job could get. And I don't think DMU has that structure in place at the moment. Uh, time, thank you. Um, any questions coming in from the audience, do raise your hand. Someone come over to you with a microphone, or you can tweet them at Demon FM. Mahad. Uh, i got a question for Caitlin. Um, you mentioned in your manifesto about timetables. But don't get me wrong, timetables for the next academic year have already been created. So how would, you, uh, how would this only be the only issue you would tackle in your next year? And Caitlin, you've got 30 seconds to answer that. Okay, so timetables have been done by the academics. Um, they're now all in place and ready to go. Academics are about to check the timetables over. There's no reason why they need to hold on to those till the beginning of term. Those could be released two, three weeks before the term starts because they've already sat on the day's basis ready to go. Okay, anyone want to add anything else to... Uh, over to Thomas. Well, I actually wanted to kind of flip the question around that Caitlin asked to me and say that... Um, at DMU, uh, there has been very little fight back. There's been very little attempt by the student union to engage in the national level of um, fight back against education cuts. And there's been really little mention or little attempt last year to do that. So what kind of, what, what kind of fight back do you have at the national level? Plan? Uh, I disagree with that. We took 150 students to the demo in 2010, which turned sour and did no students any favours. In the demo last October, I personally booked spaces for 300 students and we took 10. I think our students are much more interested in what's going on on campus and right now. Can okay, thank you. Um, do you want to answer that? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to respond to that because I was on that demo in, in November and we did get 10 people. And the reason for that was that it, we, uh, there was absolutely no advertisement. That was down to social students entirely and uh, transportation was booked the night before. Uh, Caitlin, you've got 15 seconds to answer that. Transportation was booked over two months in advance and it was advertised exactly the same way as ad we advertise everything else for the SU. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've got a question in on Twitter. What do the candidates propose in terms of job losses in the faculty slash cuts in courses? You have 15 seconds to answer this and make it quick. Caitlin. Under the portfolio review, it was considered that our academic standards were up to scratch and no courses are about to be cut. Okay, over to Thomas. We need to make sure the student dip, the, st the university dips into its reserve funds and uses its borrowing power to make sure no courses are cut, no staff are laid off. We've had enough already. Okay, uh, the same question to Mahad. Do you want to repeat the question? Uh, yeah, make sure the students know what they say. Make sure the students know what, what's happening every time. Make sure, there's a uh, make sure there's a referendum so we can get our points across so no courses get slashed. Okay, uh, thank you. And Alison, finally, what do you propose to do to ensure that the job losses and cuts in courses don't affect the students? What do you propose? Uh, probably reserve, uh, dipping into the reserve funds once again and really keeping the information out there as it, as it happens and hopefully even before these things become necessary. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that rounds up for the Deputy President Education candidates for 2013. Thank you very much to you all for coming. You can tweet us at Demon FM. The next round of candidates is going to be Vice President Welfare. Uh, they are here, they are ready, so do keep tuned. Make sure you get your questions in for Welfare 60300, starting with the word Demon, or you can text us.